Hello everyone, it's Benny here, and welcome to my Introduction to Java series. In this series, I'm going to teach you all about the basics of Java, and we're going to start from absolutely nothing. You do not need to know anything at all to get into this series. I mean, if you can use a computer, you're good. So, we're going to start from absolute scratch. This series is aimed for complete beginners, and by the end of the series, to understand the basics of Java and how you can make some pretty decent Java programs. So, with that out of the way, I actually, before I get started, I think it's fair to mention that Java does have a fairly steep learning curve compared to most things, so just, it's okay, we're gonna get through it, just I think it's only fair to let you know that before we go into this. So, anyways, that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. Now, the very first thing we need in Java development is we're going to need some software that, you know, actually lets us do some Java development. So, our first stop in our journey will be the internet. Now, we're going to go to somewhere called oracle.com, and we're going to click Downloads. And you'll notice this nice category called Java. Now, it offers you a couple of options for Java. We want just standard Java, nothing fancy. So we're going to click Java SE, which is short for Java Standard Edition. And it'll take us here. This is the page we want. Now, we have a couple of options. First off, let's just look here. We have two things, JDK and JRE. Now, if you don't have Java installed on your computer at all, you will want to download the JRE. If you can run Java programs, if you can go to a page with a Java plugin and it doesn't say that you need Java installed, then you already have that installed, so you don't need to reinstall it. Now the other thing is, other, uh, I should say the other two things we're going to need before we go into Java development are, first off, we'll need something called the Java Development Kit. And this is... It's sort of like a toolkit that has everything we could possibly need for basic Java development. So, that, uh, that's the Java development kit. And lastly, we'll need a program that actually lets us program in Java. And the more official term for a program that lets you program is an Integrated Development Environment, or IDE for short. Now, there are two very popular IDEs out there. The two really popular Java IDEs are NetBeans and Eclipse. I, for this series, will be using NetBeans, and if you're using NetBeans, that's you do not need to uh, install the Java Development Kit. It comes with the Java Development Kit installed. So you see this nice link to NetBeans right here. You can just click Download. If you want to go to Eclipse instead, it, and again, it doesn't really matter, you just go to Eclipse.org, and you'll just click Downloads, and you can download Eclipse from here. So, there you go. And if you are using Eclipse, you will need to manually install the JDK. It does not come with the JDK installed. So, after you have those things installed, I'm which I'm not going to install on camera, because I'm assuming you know how to install a program. It's not that hard. After you have those things installed, you should be ready to go. So, if you give me a moment, I'm going to get... NetBeans started. When you first start NetBeans, you'll see something that looks kind of like this. So, we don't need to worry about anything that's showing up right now. We just need to click this little button in the corner, or just go to File, New Project, whichever you prefer. Now, you'll get the, uh, this big wizard thingy. Doesn't really matter. Just click Next. Now, it will say Create Bean Class. Just uncheck that. We will not need to worry about that. And now we'll need to name our project. Now, you can call it anything you want. You can call it my project. You can call it, I don't know, you can call it Poodles. And In fact, I will call it Poodles because Poodles are awesome. So, there you go. Just create your project. And there you go. You've now created your first Java project. It has absolutely nothing in it. So now, right? you have a couple of folders it will create for you. You'll have a sources and a library. Now, uh, libraries, you will not need to worry about. The only folder you're concerned with is 
source packages. So just right click, choose new, and Java class. And again, you can call it anything, but I'm going to call this one main. And then click finish, and you've just created your first Java file. And now you'll notice it has generated a couple of things for you. First off, all this I'm actually going to delete because it doesn't really matter. And now this is the only Java code it generates for you. What this is doing is creating something called a class. And these things are a little bit more advanced than you should be learning about as your first thing in Java, so just for now what you need to know is that everything in Java needs to be in a class, and it's considered in a class if it's written between these two curly braces. And if it's not between these two curly braces, it's considered to be outside a class. But all you need to know is that everything needs to be between those two curly braces. So now we have a Java program that has absolutely nothing in it. In fact, it doesn't even run. If I hit the run pr button, and it will not let you run it because it doesn't have a main class or anything like that. So, let's talk about what we need to actually make something that runs. I think that's pretty, you know, decent starting point. So, to make a program run, it needs something called a main method. So before I talk about that, let's talk about what on earth a method is. A method is sort of like an instruction. If I said brush your teeth, then brushing your teeth is a method. It's something that you can do. So You know, turning on your computer, that's a method. It's something you can do. It's an action. And in a method, there's a list of instructions and that will describe how to perform whatever that action is. So for example, brushing your teeth might have put water on the toothbrush, um, put toothpaste on the toothbrush, rub it across your teeth for two minutes, um, spit, clean off the toothbrush, and put it back. So, or turning on your computer might be simply reach over to computer, push on button. So that that's what a method is. And we, there's the main method is a very special method. The main method tells Java that this is where you will start the program. Every program will have exactly one main method, and every program will start at the main method. And so it doesn't matter where your main method is. Java will search for the main method, and no matter where it is, it will start at the main method. So, to create the main method, first we'll need to do some syntax that we need to create just about any method. So we're just going to start off creating a method, and then I'll show you how to turn it into the main method when we get to it. First thing we need to do in creating a method, we need to uh, t tell Java who can use the method. And this might seem a little unnecessary at first, like, well, why would I care who uses my method, man? But if you think about it, it makes some sense. Like, if I have a method called erase hard drive, you know, I, it would be kind of bad if I made it so that absolutely anything on my entire computer could use that method. You know, I could see that ending rather poorly. So, that that's so there's a reason why, you know, you can control who uses your method. But you know, in this case the main method I don't really care who uses it. So, the two type of method, the two sort of control things we need to know right now, there's more, but the two main ones are public and private. Public means, you know, anyone can use it. Private means that only things inside the same class can use it. And we'll talk more about that later. But for now, we don't care who uses the main method. In fact, we want to don't care about who uses the main method because otherwise the computer won't be able to find it. So we want the main method to be public. And we're going to get some errors here because we haven't finished writing the line of code, but there we go. Now next, the, we need to make sure that there's only one main method. Because like I said, you can only have one main method. Your program can't start at two locations. So, we're going to have to use a keyword called static. This means that there's only one of it. And now, lastly, we need the return type. Now, this might not make a lot of sense at first, but it kind of does if you think about it. Now, every, occasionally you want methods that return something. If you have 
a method that says a, for example, I don't know, it calculates pi, you know, you want to have a number that's returned as a result of it. You want to have a number returned as a result of that method, because, you know, if you calculate pi and it doesn't tell you anything, well, kind of a waste of calculating pi, isn't it? So, that's the point of return type, but we don't really care. We don't need a return type, so we're just going to say void. And if you don't understand any of this stuff just yet, that's okay. You don't really need to understand it just yet. This is, I'm sort of introducing the concept, and we'll go more in depth into what these are and what these mean later on. But for now, we've created a method that can be accessed by anyone. There's only one of them, and it doesn't return anything. So, now we need to specify it's the main method. Alright, you ready? This is going to be the hardest part of this tutorial. Main. Ta-da! We've created the main method. And now, we will in need to do two braces like this, or two parentheses like this. And that tells Java that it's a method. And now, again, we're going to need instructions inside the main method, so we'll need open parenthesis and closing parenthesis. And there we go. Everything between here will be part of the main method. Now, it's actually not done yet. For Java to recognize this as the main method, we will need to type string open square bracket, closing square bracket, args. And now Java recognizes this as the main method. In fact, if I click run, you'll notice it recognizes the there's a main method now. So there we go. We have created our first line of code. And sorry, I was just taking the time there. So now, it's kind of boring if we have a program that doesn't do anything. So I'm going to just go for the classic hello world example. Now, to display something, oh, just display a message, we're just going to type system, um, which basically searches your computer, excuse me, system just refers to the computer system. Now we want output, so we do sys dot out, that gets our, not error, out, and that gets us the output. And you notice Java's finding everything we can do with the output. Now we just want to print something out on the screen, so we'll do print, and I'll do print ln, which is the same as printing, except it also d hits enter at the end, or the equivalent of the enter key. So there you go. Now, this is a method, so I'll need this, and yeah, I should actually stop going ahead myself here and explain this. So now, again, all methods do like this, and we don't have any of this de declarative method stuff in front of it, so Java knows that we're using a method, not declaring it. Now we're going to put whatever message we want inside here. So I'm just going to say, hello world. And yes, it does need to be in quotations. And you can put whatever you want in here. You can put James Woods in here if you want. Not sure if he likes it in there, but he's going in there anyways. And now lastly, we need to tell Java that, okay, we're finished with the line. You can st stop thinking we're reading a line right now. In fact, that's why I have an error here. The way we tell Java that we're done writing a line is we type a semicolon. That might seem weird, like, why would we need to uh, explicitly tell Java when a line ends? Well, if we have a really, really long line, we could divide it up across, we could divide one line across many lines. So, for example, I could do like this, and it would be valid. And actually, it's in the middle of the string, so that's not completely right, but I could do like this, and that's still valid because, because the, um, this semicolon is at the end of this. There's no semicolons here. So that's the reason for the extra line. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. That's the reason for the semicolon. And, yeah. So now, finally, we hit run. Select our main class. And it'll say it's running. And you notice output. Hello world, James Woods. So, congratulations, you've just created your very first Java program, and probably the least exciting Java program you'll ever create. So, that's okay. So in the next video, we're going to talk a little bit more about this stuff and go into some, you know, more interesting things in here than showing James Woods. So, thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.